Hello, my name is Moja and welcome to Polyglot Principles. This is the channel where I help you to learn a language like a genius by helping you follow, by showing you what the principles of language learning are, are and how you can use them to learn a language like a genius. Alright, so what's today's video about? Today's video is about how to maintain multiple languages. Right, so you've probably had this situation before, right, uh, where maybe you speak more than one language, but the problem is that maybe you're, you're beginning to lose one, or maybe you're mixing up languages. Right, this, this has happened to me before, right, so for example, uh, right now I'm learning German, but I also speak Spanish, and so for a while there I wasn't using my Spanish, and I found myself mixing up German words with Spanish words, right, so perhaps you've had this this experience before and the question is well how do you stop yourself from mixing up languages how do you maintain multiple languages right so you've worked very hard to learn a language how do you make sure you don't lose it right so that's the question um, and that's precisely what I'm going to talk about in this video and of course I have very useful tips right through to the end so to, to see all the tips uh, and all the ideas make sure you stay to the end of the video alright let's let's dive into it um, but before we start, I have a question for you. Uh, why do you think it's so hard to maintain a language? Or why do you, what do you think causes someone, or what do you think causes you to lose a language that you've already learned? Right, so that's a question. Please add it in the comment section below. I'll read through your comments and uh, maybe even reply to some of what you say. I'm really interested in knowing what you think and what your struggles are when it comes to language learning. Alright, so what causes you to lose a language? Uh, what causes you to become rust in a language? Well, it's pretty simple. It's the same as with any sport. And you begin to lose a language or you become rust in a language when you don't use it. So this is what I call, this is polyglot principles, right? So I teach you the principles of language learning. So the, now I'm going to introduce you to a principle called the principle of disuse. We'll call it that. That is, whatever you, lo you don't lose, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it, as they say, right? So, yeah, sorry, my environment is a bit noisy, as usual, man. Alright, hopefully it's not so bad. If you don't use something, you're going to lose it, right? So, uh, this is true for pretty much any skill. Or at least you're going to become worse than... Yeah, it's really noisy. Just a few seconds, please. All right, so if you don't lose it, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it, right? So, I mean, basically, I think the way, one of the ways the mind works is that uh, it, it, it wants to, if something is relevant, if something is constantly being used, your mind keeps you sharp, right? Uh, just like, uh, this, is, this is not just a principle of language learning, but this is true of pretty much any skill that you have, right? Um, you know... As sometimes they like to say it this way, if you're not improving, you're decaying. There's no such thing as remaining constant. Your skill level never remains constant. It either goes down or it goes up, right? Because if you do nothing to improve your skill level, let's say, if you try to face exactly the same kinds of challenges in language learning or anything else, what's going to happen is that your knowledge is going to become outdated, which means you're getting worse, right? Because things don't stay, they don't, don't stay the same. Right, so basically, then this means that the key to improving, right, to maintaining a language is to continue to use it. Right, but then you might ask the question, well, you know, Christian, uh, Moja, I, I, I understand what you're saying, I understand what you're saying, Moja, but, uh, I mean, I don't really have any time to, like, dedicate to maintaining the language. How much time is this going to take? Right, it doesn't actually take hours. If you already know a language... Uh, you don't need to live in, let's say, where it's spoken, or you don't need to speak it for hours in order to maintain it. You just have to keep using it. Right? There's simple things that I do, for example, to keep me from not lose, use, uh, losing the language. Sometimes I have the advantage that one of the languages I speak, people around me speak it also. So, for example, one of the languages I speak is French, right? And one of the ways I, I what I do to make sure I don't lose it is to speak with uh, with my family members and people in the community, I speak to them in French and the other local languages that I speak, right? And for certain languages, it's harder, like Spanish, because I learned Spanish, uh, but where I live right now in Congo, then I don't have Spanish speakers around me, 
So how do I maintain the language? Well, what I do is I listen to podcasts, right? Just not, not the whole day or for hours, it's just during what I call transitional moments. So for example, if I've just finished doing some work and I'm taking a break or I'm, I'm like just chilling or walking from my room to the bathroom, whatever, I, I, play, uh, I play a podcast in Spanish. So, and uh, basically, I guess this is another principle that's really useful is at some point you want to graduate from studying the language to using it. There's a difference between living in a language and just, uh, and just studying it. Or when you're studying a language, your focus is on learning new words, learning new vocabulary. But ultimately, you're learning a language because you want to use it in some way. So this is the best way to keep it relevant is to make it, to use it to improve your life in some way. So for example, I'm interested in business and how to run a business and how to become more successful. So I listen to a success podcast, a business, actually a success in business podcast, right? In, in Spanish, right? So this is information that's useful to me. Ordinarily, I'd be listening to this information in English. But since I want to use my language, well, I decide to learn about it in Spanish. And the result is, of course, since I'm using a different language, it's forcing me to think differently, you know? Even if it's the same idea, a Spanish speaker is not going to express it in the same way as an English speaker. There's going to be things that the Spanish speaker says that will click better for me than if I heard it in English, right? So I'm using the language, right? So, I mean, there was a time when I was also writing in Spanish, yes? So I had a task to do. I could write it in English, which is the language I'm used to, but I decided to write it in Spanish anyway. So this is one of the ways you can keep the language relevant. And it doesn't take much time. I mean, even if you do like just half an hour every day, half an hour, 20 minutes, um, or you just perform a task, usually performing the language, you'll keep it alive, you'll keep it useful. Otherwise, it's really gonna die on you. Um, but I guess here's the other point also to note, here's the other point to note is that if you've really learned a, a language or any skill well, you never totally lose it. Right? So, it's for example, I mean, an easier example is like the bicycle. If you learned how to ride the bicycle as a kid, it's possible that, right, very likely you learned it very deeply. You really knew how to ride it. Which means that even if, let's say, you spend like 10 years without riding a bike, sure, you'll be rusty, but it won't take you long to relearn how to ride it, right? You just have to sit on the bike maybe after a few minutes or maybe like maybe a day or two or three days you return to your original level this is the same with the language right so maybe you're not interested in maintaining uh maybe you're afraid maybe it's you're really afraid that maybe i'll forget the language totally so this is not true if you've learned the language deeply but you can't truly forget a language right i mean like for, I mean, I guess I, I could give you some simple examples. So, for example, I, I, when I was a kid, I, I used to speak Swahili, right? Uh, Kiswahili. But then I moved to America to study for five years, and I barely spoke any Kiswahili. When I came back to Africa, well, most of my Kiswahili was gone, right? But I had learned it deeply before, right? Because I had used it a lot as, as a kid. And guess what? After having a few conversations, after a week, the language came back, and I was able to use it again. So, I mean, if you want to maintain it, then of course make it useful. Stop studying the language and start using it. And the second tip I was saying is, maybe you don't even need to worry about maintaining it. If you learned it well, you can always uh, refresh. Refresh the language, uh, relearn it quickly. Uh, of course, uh, uh, ref uh, but get it back to the same level in a short period of time. Um, now, if you like this material, I usually publish a video every Monday at 8 a.m. Central African time. So if you enjoyed this video, likely you'll enjoy others. And if you want to keep getting other videos, please don't forget to subscribe to this video and hit the bell notification. Ding, 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 ding. This will notify you whenever I publish a new video. Thank you very much for watching this one, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.